In the last episode, we arrived in Marseille, the third largest metropolitan area in France. We explored the historic neighborhood of Le Bagne, and I got to see the dramatic skyline of Marseille from the entrance to the city's old port for the very first time. Because the rest of my Marseille itinerary will require me to visit the old port area a few times in the next two days, I decided. To skip the area for now, and instead heading straight to the crown jewel of Marseille's impressive skyline, La Basilique Notre Dame de la Carte. To reach the basilica, I had to first take the bus to the foot of the hill and then climb up like how pilgrims back in the days used to do. I mean, you could also take one of those little tourist trains of Marseille or taxis to there directly. But as an independent traveler who constantly struggles with funds, I'll go with the cheapest way. Here you can see a very long way ahead of us and very steep one too. But I bet the view will be very rewarding at the top. Almost there. What a hike! I can imagine the lives of、uh, pilgrims back in the days. But hey, once you even reach only halfway through, the view is absolutely spectacular. La Basilique Notre Dame de la Carte is located on a hill that is visible from pretty much everywhere in Marseille, and that also means you have a commanding view of the city from there. As well. With the bird's eye view, I was able to watch a soccer match for a bit. My favorite football slash soccer player, Zinedine Zidane, is also from Marseille. Growing up, he was the only French person I could name besides Charles de Gaulle and Napoleon. I also watched his very last match during the 2006 World Cup, where his legendary career ended in the most dramatic way you can ever imagine. Zizou continues to impress the world as a top-notch football manager today. What an incredible football legend he is! And now I also want to say, what an incredible city his hometown Marseille has been. Now let's get back to La Basilique Notre Dame de la Carte. 
the Basilica for Our Lady of the Guard. Like the name suggests, the basilica was built on the foundation of a fort that once guarded the city. You can still spot the remains of that fort around the basilica's foundation. Notre Dame, or Our Lady, refers to Mary, whose giant statue holding a baby Jesus can be seen as easily as the church building itself from all corners of Marseille. The word Garde is rather straightforward. It is a prayer to Mary and God, asking for the protection of the people of Marseille, as well as the ships come and go every day in the old port down below. Imagine La Basilique Notre Dame de la Garde as Marseille's Statue of Liberty. It was probably one of the first things the sailors back in the days, or maybe even today, could see of Marseille from a distance. Many on the internet say that this basilica is the number one attraction in Marseille. I was already impressed with the Marseille Cathedral, located next to La Bagne, where we visited in a previous episode. Why don't we take a look inside to see what could be more impressive than, well, a very impressive church building? The moment I stepped into the basilica. I realized that what the internet people were saying was absolutely a hundred percent correct. Like the Marseille Cathedral, La Basilique Notre Dame de la Garde is a blend of architecture styles you can find around the Mediterranean regions, except with a lot more elegance. Now, come to think of it, this basilica was the most beautiful cathedral I saw during my entire France trip. If you ask me to recommend going to one church building to check out in France, it's not gonna be Notre Dame de Paris. It has to be Notre Dame de la Garde here in Marseille. Yeah, I want to say, wow, what a place! Instead of going back through the way I came and taking the bus, I decided to walk to the old port area. Believe it or not, there was once a funicular that connected the old port area to this magnificent basilica. Huh? Not sure if it would be covered by my Marseille transit pass if it wasn't demolished. After a nice stroll downhill, I eventually reached an interesting-looking building. This is the Abbey of Saint Victor. What impresses me the most is that this building was built in the early fifth century, less than 100 years after Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. This church made me feel like I traveled back in time, giving me a rare opportunity even in Europe. To see what a church building from the era of the Roman Empire looks like.
Unlike modern churches, the Abbey of Saint Victor appears to be very dark inside, giving me a more of a mystic and intimate feeling rather than the holy feeling often experienced by worshippers in newer and grander church buildings such as La Basilique Notre Dame de la Garde, where we visited earlier, or La Basilica di San Pietro of Vatican City, arguably the greatest church building in the world today. Maybe this comparison also reflected the history of Christianity in Europe. How Christians went from a humble religious group who barely survived Roman persecutions from just one century ago to Europe's dominant religion, with tremendous influence, power, and wealth over the entire continent and beyond. The Abbey of Saint Victor was located on the other end of Marseille's old port. It was already getting dark after our exploration of the city from Le Bagne to the hill where Marseille's most spectacular basilica is located. Despite of being the old port, you still see mountains of smaller boats and yachts there. I get it. In the modern era. You need a much larger new port to accommodate the giant container ships and cruise ships. However, the old port area remains to be the commercial and cultural center of Marseille. Yeah, I think uh, rather than calling this part of Marseille old port, it should be called the yacht parking lot instead. And uh, believe it or not, this port has been in use since the sixth century BC. Afterwards, I went to buy a pair of sunglasses at the local department store, which later I realized that the dishonest salespeople there scammed me. I'll elaborate on this experience and share with you how I fought back successfully in this friend series contest video. So make sure to subscribe our channel so you won't miss this video or the chance to win prizes. The same night, while I was trying to search for a restaurant. To have dinner in the old port area, I was approached by this individual. You speak English a little bit. Now here in Marseille, the community is very diverse. This is like a major gateway of France, and、uh, see people from all over the place here. And the food so far,、uh, I've only tried one place, and that was unbelievably good. The Palestinian restaurant that's just downstairs from my hotel—that's actually the best meal I've ever had in France so far. <laughs> But anyways, tonight for dinner, I bought something to my hotel room. You're right. Actually, this time we're gonna do. A、uh, food review. A different place, just from downstairs,、uh, but they do offer takeaway food. And、uh, I also bought some、uh, fruits from the local KFC. One of my favorite things to try out in different countries is to、uh, try out their、uh, fruit as well. Like the cherry tomatoes from Italy, it was unbelievable. The strawberry from Sicily, arguably the best strawberry I've ever tried. Period. Anyways, let's get started. All right, so this is the tomato. Yes, so Morocco cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. How do you pronounce that again? Cherry tomatoes. All right, and、uh, I just bought a single、uh, <laughs> banana, and、uh, this one only cost. 35 cents, and this one is from、uh, 
uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So uh, I believe in English, this country is called the Ivory Coast. Again, I've never had any banana from the Ivory Coast and nor any cherry tomato. Cherry tomatoes from uh, Morocco. So both are uh, actually fruits from Africa. That's a place I've always wanted to go. But you know, it can be very costly. But maybe, I don't know, if uh, you guys uh, watch, subscribe and like and uh, share my videos, maybe one day I'll go. And here comes the main course. Oh my goodness. This is my face, this is the thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's dripping oil, wow. <laughs> this is uh, a duner, so it's a kebab sandwich. And uh, instead of the regular German style bread, <laughs> this one was actually uh, fully loaded onto one single baguette. How good and how crazy can that be? I just can't wait to try out. And I thought when I bought this, it was just the uh, sandwich only, but turns out it also includes fries. All right, so that's everything. Oh, actually one more, one more, wait. And of course, in France, how can you forget this? Perrier, and I also bought a rosé. And this is another one of those uh, one euro and 50 cents rosés. So we're gonna have this. This one, oh my gosh. I just can't wait. I don't know what it tastes like, but it smells just like heaven. Okay, let's get started. Cheers. Ooh. Now let's start with appetizer. So this is the Moroccan cherry tomato. <laughs> cherry tomato. Okay, there we go. Wow, this is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I know in Canada we have those uh, cherry tomatoes and uh, they are mostly sour. It tastes like heaven. Let's try this. The banana from Côte d'Ivoire. It's very firm. There we go, cheers. Mm. This tastes like banana though, but it's not as sweet as the banana we buy in Canada. So personally, um, this is still very good. Definitely tastes very fresh. Or maybe I haven't had banana for so long. This just uh, feels so good. Not as uh, impressive as these little cherry tomatoes. <laughs> cherry tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna finish this. Ooh. All right, next, we're getting to the main course. The fries, the fries I didn't even order. But the boss man just charged me only for the sandwich. I'm not even sure if uh, he uh, just threw in for a free. Mm. Can't stop this one, sir. Very, very freshly made. All right, guys, I know you've been waiting for this because I'm waiting for this too. It's time for a heavyweight to enter the stage. The baguette sandwich that's larger than my head. All right, there we go. Oh my gosh, it's fully loaded. There are vegetables down there as well, but you just can't see it. It just looks amazing. I can't wait. I know you can't wait too. Let's get started. The first bad bite is a lot of bread. Just baguette. But it's a very good baguette. All right. Oh my gosh, this is meat heaven. Meat is very crisp, very smoky. He asked me for sauce or something, I said, please add them all. But still, I still can't find the sauce. It's just all meat, wow. Try another one. Ah. 
I can tell there's some mayonnaise, there's uh, onion, and some lettuce in there. I need to calm down. I think Marseille is like, uh, it's a food heaven. Just the places down from my hotel, those two places, they're both fantastic. Wow! Well, that concludes my first day in Marseille. This city totally surprised me in both good ways and bad ways. It was a city that is magical and immediately became my favorite city in France. At the same time, oh well, you certainly need to practice your common sense like you would in many other big cities. Hey, but I can tell you that the scam and the harassment were the only issues I encountered during my two night stay. The rest was just pure Mediterranean awesomeness that's unrivaled by all other French cities I visited during this adventure. Our exploration of Marseille will continue the next day. What's gonna happen next? Follow me to the next episode. Better uh, hurry up.